Hey everybody, thanks for uh, tuning in to C Squad Live. And uh, today we have a special guest, an in town guest, to make this a little easier, Jason Grimes. And so uh, thanks for everybody tuning in. We'll let it spool up here a little bit. Um, and uh, in the meantime, I see, uh, yep, here we go. We got viewers uh, stacking in. But before we get to Jason, as you know, I've been on a mission to get in the Race of Champions race at the Wasota 100 this week, which I finally did it after eight tries in Winnipeg. We won it. We stayed ahead of Skeeter Esty by about this much. I thought, how appropriate then to get a guest who's won the Race of Champions, my friend Jason Grimes. But, uh, cool, we got more people spooling up. If you do have any questions for things, uh, and I'd like to keep this going in the off-season, but... Uh, again, welcome to the C-Squad Racing Show. Uh, we're going to discuss cool stuff around racing. It's sponsored by Weir's Machine, Redheaded Rebel Brew, Coffee, and RHR Swag. Cool stuff for race cars. Uh, quick update on my racing program while we let people uh, tune in here. As I see, the uh, viewership is growing. Awesome to see. Um, let me see here. I'm adjusting. I got a computer in front of me, so bear with me. I was trying to see the uh, comments. But anyway, so Thursday I went to um, Forks. We got rained out. So Friday we we're at River Cities again for the Sykes Memorial Race, which was a success given the weather and all that. We raced the heat 10th to 5th, which 10th to 5th at a big show like that with 57 Midwest mods puts you starting in the front row of a B main. Um, and then, um, which was to happen on Saturday, which we skipped because we went to Metallica instead, but we did make race the makeup feature, started uh, fifth, trying to pass for second. Believe it or not, I broke the wheel studs off of my left rear, and thank goodness we caught it under caution, went in, and of course the wheel fell off by the time we got to near the scale. So didn't wreck anything more than that. Saturday noon race, uh, we went third to third in the heat, 16th to 11th in the feature, and then we went to Metallica, and Sunday, I just ran out of gas. I was going to go to Madison, which would have been our 25th racetrack of the year, but driver ran out of gas and energy and went home and slept and took it easy and caught up on Netflix and with the bride and all that good stuff. A um, couple of thoughts on national points. Skeeter Esty is a badass, officially because he won his 27th feature in like 40 races. That's like props to Skeeter and his team and his car and his dad and his brother for sandbagging all year. And um, But good job, Skeeter. I'm thinking he's probably got it locked up. So Lance Schill and um, Austin Hunter are duking it out for Bridesmaid. Meanwhile, Dan Wheeler and I and Lauren Johnson are probably duking it out for fourth. Um, not really duking it out, but anyway. On a side note, Skeeter and I raced three times. And uh, he came to Jamestown, and I won that night. Of course, he smoked me in the heat, but I won the feature. And then he, we were, I went to his home, uh, one of his home tracks, Proctor, and he won. And then we both showed up for the Race of Champions night, and I think he sandbagged for like 19 laps, and then put on the pressure, and I beat him by like this much for the Race of Champions. So... Technically, I beat the national champion twice, so hopefully Skeeter won't show up anywhere where I'm racing, and uh, although I hear he may make it to the 100, which uh, he wasn't going to do, but it'd be really cool to see him at the 100. Anyway, um, now that we're spooling up, uh, got some uh, live viewers, we are going to get to our guests here. A um, couple of, normally I have tips for learning, so uh, for that, if you're new, it pays to just, if you're new to racing and you have a car and you got a car and you got it set up, just race it five, ten times before you change it too much and get used to the car and the car's personality. Because if you chase it, change the car too much every heat and feature, while still being a new driver, it's really hard to know if it's car, driver, or what. So that's what I think is helpful. But do what you think is best. And also remember, track conditions change. So you might be your first... One, you might have a really good night, think the car's bolted down, uh, all of those good things, and discover the second week the reason it was so bolted down is because it was a hammer down track, and all cars work good on hammer down. Noteworthy story, 
Uh, we'll sort of 100 is coming up this week, so turn it into racingdirt.com if you want to watch it or go to Fergus Falls and join the fun practice Tuesday, racing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. If you're coming, put it in the comments. Let us know you're coming. Be a good time. And my Rebel Rants is the 10-foot rule. If you're within 10 foot of someone in the pits, say hi. It's called being friendly. And everybody likes it when people are friendly. People respond in kind. Generally, if I say, hey, how's it going? The other person will usually respond accordingly. Every once in a while, I get a few gestures. Uh, I don't know if it's the red hair, my driving, my trailer, my race car. I don't know. Anyway, but generally people respond in kind. So when you're in the pits, new pit rule, be kind. 10-foot rule, eye contact rule, say hi, rather than look grumbly. And uh, by all means, um, if there's... Never mind. Anyway, so if you have any questions for Jason, put them in the comments. Are we still spooling here? Are we still spooling? I don't know if I lost my spooling. Please say we're still spooling. Oh, yes. Are we still... We are live and we're spooling, but anyway, I can't see the comments. I've lost the comments, but we're going to keep going because that's what you do in racing. You keep going. So, Jason, thanks for coming on the show. And uh, you're one of my heroes in racing, um, and I kind of have a love-hate relationship with you. I love learning from you and watching you race, but of course I don't like getting beat with you when you show up at the track and decide to race the class I'm in. But that being said, if you're going to get fast, you got to race the fast boys. So tell us, for people who don't know, tell us kind of your general overview of your racing. Well, I pretty much started from the bottom up. Um, Dad used to race Enduros back in the day. Wasn't even really that much into it. Um, a guy in high school vocational center brought his race car in to work on it, and I thought, shit, I, I should do that. That'd be kind of cool. So that's kind of how it started. I came home and told Dad I should have a bomber car, and he looked at me like I was on drugs and said, well, you don't even like racing. I said, well, I don't know. I think I'd give it a whirl. So it's kind of how it started. So pure stock or bomber or was yeah. it called an enduro then? Well, a bomber car. Bomber car. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Ugly, ugly old thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. And how'd you do in that? How long did it take you to get the old racing thing figured out? Um, I don't know if we ever have it figured out, but... Um, I, I actually won two features my first year, so. Awesome. Unfortunately, I was good enough to, uh, keep going. Oh, yeah. The, uh, yeah, it kind of turns into a habit after a little bit. Yeah. So, a couple of years in the bomber, and then. Yeah, I, I floated around back and forth a few years. Um, I think I ran streets, like, in 01. Um, I started in 1998, so actually this year's my 20th year. Holy smoke, yeah. 20 years. You don't seem old enough to be racing 20 years. I know. I hear that a lot until they see all the gray hair. <laughs> Maybe it's from the 20 years of racing. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, kind of floated around in the streets. I built my first street car and... O2 so, range. So, so when you say you built your first car, does that mean like you went to the junkyard and got a car and a f rolling yeah. car and then gutted it and put a cage on it? Yep. Well, my bomber car, the first bomber I had, it uh, it was a, a car already. Um, it was a tank. But uh, So what was it like? It was a Monte Carlo, an old Monte. Oh, yeah. It had like two inch well pipe. I mean... The, the old scale, I think, was going to break when I drove across it. So, um, and then the second year, we took a uh, main cage out of a different car and, and built built a car. So, cool. pretty much kind of been building cars off and on, you know. Um, cool, cool. Did uh, So, your street, you put the cage on it, and then you raced it, and then you... Did you get winning with that right uh, away, or was that a little no, more challenging? No, that, that was a, an eye-opener, as is any class when you move up, usually. Um, I, uh, I struggled. The car was really good, had some mechanical issues, and uh, 
just never could seal the deal. I think I won one race. I'm not sure. Your first year in the street? Yeah, but it came very... Then you got going on a rail. No. 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 Then I, that car, I kept blowing transmissions up. And uh, for those of you that remember back in the day, I had a power glide literally explode out of the car. And, um, I caught on fire. The guy on, oh, behind me caught on, on fire, fire. And it was pretty crazy. Um, nobody got hurt, so that was all good. Still got mm -hmm. my toes. Mm -hmm. um, Is what the uh, oil or whatever? Well, you everything went out the passenger side. side. So um, pretty much it broke the... Transmission off, torque converter went flying out. Um, yeah, yeah, broke the back of the block on the engine. So oh, I parked wow. the streetcar after that for a while. And I think Dad was running the, the bomber car still. So oh, I, Vinny. Yeah, yeah. Vinny. He uh, he was trying to have some fun, but he was hating life. He, he couldn't get it together. But it was still fun for him, I think. And then you went to Midwest Mods and then modified? Yeah, eventually. I, I built a, a new street car and then, uh, actually I only raced it one year. And then I went to the B Mods mm -hmm. in 06, so. Oh wow, so um, just to jump around, because uh, I've known you mainly being a modified racer. Yeah. And, uh, but be, uh, what, what, do you have any pre-race rituals? You know, listen to ACDC, <laughs> put your hat on backwards. You know, I'm not a very superstitious guy. Um, I don't know. I think, I think the only thing about having a good night is just good positive energy. If you're not having fun, usually the racing doesn't go well either. So, how do you? What do you do to kind of keep? I mean, in your experience, obviously, you went to the track, rushed. You went to the track in a good mood, bad mood, like. What, how do you reset yourself now being more of a modern elder in racing? Well, I don't know. I still struggle at times, so I don't really have a, a set in stone answer. Um, even though there may be things bothering you or, you know, I think by the time you get to the track, you kind of, for me, it's kind of like a drug to be there. Um, so you kind of just take in the moment. Sometimes it's good to step back and just be thankful you're there, so. So you've raced pier stocks, street stocks, uh, Midwest Modifieds, B Mods, A Mods, you've raced USMTS, really super open mods. Yeah. Uh, you've raced the late model a time or two. Any super runs, super stock runs? No supers never, yet. Never raced a super? I haven't sat in one yet. Any sprint cars? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. So out of the what you have raced, uh, what what's your favorite? I'm pretty partial to the modifieds. I, you know, it was kind of cool the first time I got to drive a late model was... Uh, especially following the Sites deal. It was actually Sites' old car that Paul Mueller had. Um, it was all lettered up mm -hmm. like John's car too. Um, I ran it at the Stampede, which is coming up here in two weeks oh, also. Yep. So it was my first time. Um, it was pretty cool. I mean, the car was a lot older than what was out there. And, and uh, I think I did better than anybody, even myself, expected. Yeah, I remember being there and seeing you pass your way up. I can't yeah. remember how far you got up there. I was, I think I ended up fifth. Fifth. Yeah, I started like 22nd or something. Not sub. bad for a rookie in his late model. Yeah, yeah. So. In a borrowed late model. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so um, but modify, you like racing mod. The, what, um, so you race with soda. IMCA, you've raced uh, USRA slash USMTS, any other sanctionings? I suppose you've done some open uh, races over the years too. Yeah, I mean that's about it though. I've never done like UMP mm -hmm. stuff. Um, what, what, uh, any particular favorite sanctioning body or you just kind of race where the money's at or what your mood's like or what, how do you? Well, the IMCA kind of happened just on logistics of where we're at. Um, and so you hadn't raced IMCA before a couple of years ago and 
Yeah. You built a car and got some wins and Yeah. I I uh while in fifteen I built built my first A mod and uh kind of started out. It was the year before Jamestown switched, so um I had my Hughes chassis that I ran as my Wasotas whatever car. Right. And um, that's the one you won the uh, uh, race of champions in at the Wasota 100. Yeah. Which, hey, we'll get back to <laughs> Any tips for winning the race of champions at the Wasota 100? Well, I mean, back then it was at Huron. It's been at Huron for so long. Um, Buzzy Adams used to just kill us all the time. Yeah. And finally, I think I, I just said, you know... Everybody thinks he's got some magical car. Or is, it's, he was just flat out out driving us. That's what my deduction was. So I pretty much... I, I remember being there at that race, and it seems to me like you, you went to the high side and made your own lane, and you just went up there and started going and going, and then eventually uh, passed your way up. Yeah. I almost think he fell back a little bit initially. Well, I've won two of them, actually. Two? Okay. Yeah. So, so the tip is, is you've got to, like, just drive. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, it's it's like, well, the big tracks are a little different deal, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you just got to go for it, I mean, you know. What's, uh, if a big track, would you consider Fergus a big track? No. No. But her on would be, Alex would yeah. be. So, any tips for Fergus? You've been there, you've won some races in Fergus. Yeah. Fergus, I mean, it's always been decent. Um, you know, it's a it's a driver's track. So, you know, it kind of races like a big track because there's high speed there. There's a wall around it. Um, can't be afraid of the wall. Right. Um, so... I so just, how, how, for people who might be a little afraid of the wall, yeah. what's <laughs> any insights on getting up there against the wall where it's fast? Well, the closer you are, the less it hurts when you hit it. Um, <laughs> All right. You know, I've always, of course, I, one of my nicknames have been High Side Grimes, but I always preferred the high side. Um, and, you know, I don't know. Like, Jamestown never had a wall. Um and I never really got experience with them until, you know, West Fargo, actually, the old, mm -hmm. the old big, big track. Um, it's just something you got to get accustomed to, and you got to hit the wall a few times to figure it out, I think. It's a lot better to stay on the gas than lift and hit the brake, I can tell you that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> on the, with the modified, since you kind of raised those in different sanctioning bodies, anything you like? For one sanctioned body over the other, from Minnesota, USMTS, uh, um, IMCA? I, I like some things about all of them. Um, they all have their little niche. Um, I like the the IMCA for the traveling capabilities. I mean, they've, they've got, got so many tracks and everywhere, you know. You see a lot of winter races down south um, for the guys that want to make a vacation mm -hmm. you know um there are some usra specials too um i i like the open open motor stuff open motor rail. Um, yeah i is i mean i i obviously have a crate and that's all i have right now i have some open stuff that i'm gonna put together next year hopefully but uh mm -hmm. you, you've taken a little time off recently you didn't really get out there this season in the beginning right um, well, let's take a step back. So you, you, you served, you got into, you mastered kind of shocks. You do, you have in te, or, uh, GRS shock service, a business you created yep. in your garage that you service shocks. So obviously you know something about shocks. And then, then from there you built, started building and selling modifies. Yeah. Uh, IMCA and Wasota uh, B mod. Pretty and, much, my deal's pretty much a, a Wasota B mod right now. Um. That's where my customer base started, um, and what, that's any tips for shocks. I know everybody, you know, people call you and they want the magic shock and like, give me the one oh one on shocks. I think there's a lot to shocks. Um, the biggest thing is finding a good balance. I don't think that there's 
all this magic out there, so to speak, that everybody thinks there is. Um, you know, I've stuck to Integra. They've been with me. I've been on Integra since 2009. Um, I started doing shocks the winter of 13, mm -hmm. prior to the start of 13. Um, I just, I think they're an excellent company, been awesome to deal with. And as far as any new technology, I think they're on top of it. So, so if someone, if, if like, if, 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 if someone calls for shocks and says, Hey, I'm kind of snug on entry. What can you do? You kind of work with them and kind of, do you watch video? Do you, um, I try to, I, I kind of try to have knowledge of their cars. Um, you know, obviously it depends on B mod, A mod, um, and of course sanction, but you know, I, I try to be more personal. Like I don't just have a B mod package, so to speak. Um, I try to custom kind tailor to each person. what their needs are and their yeah. driving style and chassis. Okay. Try so to find out what tracks <laughs> they're on, if they're always heavy or, you know, so I try to get all the options and, and of course it depends on their budget. Mm -hmm. Um, so try to, try to work with all yeah. angles. So what's it like to, you built your own modified chassis for yourself and then how do you get into s selling it when people come and say, Hey, I want you to kick my ass. <laughs> and so I'd like to buy your car. Yeah. Right? How's that? I, I kind of got a hair up my butt to, to build them on, you know, so, um, I've always been friends with Bob Sagan and of course he used to build cars, pro chassis back in the day and um, you know I built my street stocks and stuff so I uh, kind of got him going a little bit and we uh, built my first B mod together and, and uh, I only raced it I think uh, 14 or 16 times that summer. And how many you win? I think it was 12. Yeah. I, the, car, the car was awesome. Yeah. And Jamestown was mirror slick and smooth every night pretty much that year. So, And then people started calling and you started selling a few of them? Yeah. I, I, you know, I kind of, that was the plan was to kind of get some B mods out there and stuff. And it, it went pretty good to begin with. You know, I, I wasn't prepared, so to speak, but you know, it's all a good learning curve. Um, Kind of do it on the side more now. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, too much you, stress. So you've raced for 20 years. Give me three tips for a new driver. What would, you, what would you tell the younger, just starting racing, Jason Grimes? If you could go back and talk to yourself, what would be three tips you'd give yourself? Be prepared. Be um, prepared? Yeah, I still struggle with that. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, do as I say, not as I, I do in that. Right. But, you know, um, so kind of winnings in the shop. Yeah. Go yeah. To the track prepared. Yeah. You need to put in the time because the next guy is. How about like, how do you get better as a driver? I mean, usually when I'm talking to drivers, not all, but usually they're talking about the engine and the track <laughs> officials and their chassis and their shop guy and. I never hear them talking about themselves. It, well, if that's you, funny you say that. That's that's a big reason why I kind of put the chassis building on the side. Um, you know, it's it's human nature. The hardest thing is to to sit back and say, driver needs work. Um, so on on the track is uh, when you, to improve as a driver. So how did you improve as a driver? Obviously, lap time is what everybody says. But what what would be what would you tell? Jason, on how how you're gonna learn well, as a driver. The best thing I did is I just started traveling. You know, back in closer to 05, um, I just started traveling. Back then in the street stocks, all the Eastern guys were kicking our ass. So, you know what? Let's go Let's see, see what they got. So, you know. So, and you would learn by trap, by just showing up and racing different track yes. conditions. And, and that's another thing. Racing the same track is going to be detrimental to anybody. Well, um, you can dominate, can't you? You can, but then, you know... If, you might struggle with if you go somewhere else. Right. Um, so, seed time is huge. Um, 
racing one night a week. So you got to get after it. Mm -hmm. The more you race, the better you're going to get, hopefully. Um, um, let me take a quick break. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, if you want to, share the, show out, share the show out, tag your friends, whatever, have them check it out. Uh, a quick uh, sponsor announcement. Uh, Red Hammer Rebel Brew Coffee. They make coffee for game changers, rule breakers, and rebels, <laughs> and uh, even for cowboys. And so check it out, rhrbrew.com. Um, so... Um, Couple of this or that questions. Do you race for points or wins? Wins. Wins. Do you like slick or hammer down? Both. Both. Yeah. Explain that. Well, I love dry slick, don't get me wrong. But I also like getting up on the wheel, getting after it once in a while. Right, you're a high side guy, so yeah. you like the high side slick and high side hammer down. Yeah, I mean I I like to race on both because then you're prepared sure. when it happens if you're traveling um any tips for getting better racing the slick i mean i know i just jamestown's a slick track you've dominated jamestown speedway for years in whatever track track class you decide to uh race and so any tips for slick Slower is faster most of the time. So what does that mean when you say slower is faster? Does that mean you go in and go, you uh, let off the throttle slower and you yeah. lower up more? You know, and I, then pedal it out. Or I would say, you know, a lot of guys overcharge their corners. Um, a lot of guys haul off in there and they dump off the throttle. <laughs> in a modified especially that that can be just detrimental do you with someone like you that's really good on the slick do you like do foot exercises in the winter <laughs> no no just no. Nat it's a natural foot thing I, I got like a my foot when I like lift it goes up like four inches <laughs> right <laughs> automatically I don't yeah. have any quarter inch lift increments so you might want to have a, a spring on your gas pedal <laughs> to hold it at half throttle all uh, right you know, that's the biggest thing is, is, you know, just in the winter time, just go mess around on the ice, I guess. I don't know. All right. Uh, bull ring or half mile? Well, there again, both. both. So uh, you, you yeah, like both. Whatever, I do. what different, okay, fair enough. How about gas or alcohol? Um, well, open races, you're mostly on gas because they're longer and there's more no fuel stops. And... Um, methanol for cooling and everything else oh. for a little 20 lap feature yeah methanol's fine ditch your high side well i think we know that answer high side primarily but I although you just beat me on the ditch not too long ago <laughs> yeah i do believe never even went to the top yeah. yeah um big check or big trophy um well i'm short on big checks so i gotta say big, big check jet. right now i see a lot more of them um what what's your most wanted win? Most wanted, boy. If you've won some big show, you've won the Stampede. You yeah. won a race, a Champions race. I never have won a, a USMTS race yet. So just, I'd like to win not only one of those, but maybe a Crown Jewel. That's a USMTS yeah. sanction. I'd say like a Jamboree win. Jamboree would be. Are you going to the Jamboree this year? It, I really had planned on it. Um, but no, I'm going to stick to home. You've got, now, you haven't been racing or much. You want to share why or just... Well, you know, part of the long process of my chassis building, um, we also put up a shop, which we do everything ourselves, That's which right. kind of is good and bad. Yeah. Yep. Um, life, you right. know, um, trying to get my, my house situation Please. done planting some trees Please. landscaping and the shop so ultimately mm -hmm. trying to get myself prepared so next year right. i can yeah and you've still been down. helping customers i know you got customers uh, uh nate ranky snaps me uh he just <laughs> won two in a row four in a row four in a row okay yes. so you got some customers you're taking care of so you're busy there and of course uh um anyway so um 
any new drivers out there you'd like to give a shout out to? Um, that you think, you know, hey, this. You know, the the one guy that I, I've been impressed with this last few years is local guy. Obviously, I see him more. Um, Jeff Schwinn Jr. Oh, yeah. yeah. Never Real raced three. in his life. Yeah. And got into the B mods and uh, he's he's really pretty good yeah you know um, yeah he gets yeah. after it he's he's at that transitional phase where you're you're having these good runs and then by the powers that be something bad happens so it's really frustrating um, basically been there done yeah, that yeah. but yeah. you you just got to keep your head on straight and take a every night fresh and mm -hmm. and keep keep working at it is that if if someone was discouraged in racing what would you tell them because you've obviously had oh I, yeah nights you went home and said enough yeah but i yet, mean yeah you're uh this still sport racing. is so humbling you know it's it's one of those things it's the hardest thing to do is stay on top, you know, like, obviously. Yeah, because you were one king of the dirt. Yeah, I, I mean. You're, you're still the, you haven't raced, what, how many races are you race in Jamestown? Three or five? Three, I know four. Know. Yeah. I know you won two of them, right? No, just one. I got beat one. the other week. I was leading it. Oh, okay. That was, that was humbling. Yeah. Maybe a little bit, but yeah. Well, yeah. I mean. New car, or kind of new car. Yeah, I mean, I. You haven't raced B mods in a few years, have you? No. no. So yeah, yeah, I mean, so. I just basically drug it out and put it together and go. So I can say I won more times at the Jamestown Speedway this year than Jason Grimes. Granted, yeah. I raced there five times. <laughs> anyway, um, any um, anything you know? You traveled for USMTS. You uh, uh, one uh, one year I know. You won Rookie of the Year for USMTS, which isn't the easy feat. No. Um, any tips for traveling? Well, I mean, that's hardcore traveling. So you've got like local race traveling where you do a binge in Minnesota, and then you have, hey, I just went to uh, Texas for yeah four nights of racing. The the biggest thing is, is being prepared. You do your work in the shop. Um, course there USMTS you got endless tire work throughout the week but um have your ducks in a row when you most times on that deal if you're leaving it's a two-week run mm -hmm. a lot of times or at least a week straight so you know having your spare parts ready and stuff that it's all the simple things you know mm -hmm. time consuming you know, if you got spare parts, make sure they can bolt in and you don't have to adjust anything. Um, anything that can save you time down the road, spend the time in the shop. So, okay. Um, the We're kind of uh, starting to get towards the end of this, but it's kind of been a, I let the time go a little bit because yeah. it's kind of been interesting. I've known you and just uh, talking to you in this capacity is a little bit different where... Uh, Obviously, I've called you over the years and asked you a lot of questions because right. I wanted to get better as a racer and probably been annoying. But uh, <laughs> a couple of uh, anything you've seen when you're traveling or when you've been to other tracks that that you really like that you thought, hey, more tracks should do this. Um, the biggest thing that that I have came to a conclusion of, obviously, when the promoters are genuine and and try to make their rounds. Um, you know, or if you're so you're there, to the drivers. Yeah, and... if you're there early, if they stop by and, and talk to you. But, you know, the biggest thing is keep your program quick, you know. Um, the lining them up with your yeah, caution, the lining them up right the away. Yeah, the cautions, the, just the flow. And, and have the racetrack ready to race. You know, there's nothing worse than going there and packing track all day or, you know. Right. So, and not only that, it speeds the program up. So, you know, that's what I really enjoy. You you can, yeah, that's the biggest thing. Um, do you, uh, when you're racing, do you talk to yourself? Ah, uh, yeah, I think what so. What do you say? Any um, I don't know. Slow I, down, speed up. It's, racing is a big mental game. I, I think 
people don't realize that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the biggest thing. You know, I've started with my dad and I've raced a lot without him too, but the biggest thing is to have a memory, you know, um, so if you can replay a complete race right. after the race, in your head, you can or, learn or video it. Where did I make the mistakes? You know, right. So, and and just pay attention to the other guys, their habits, or you know, if you see a guy pull away from you, it wasn't necessarily his line or what. Right. How did he enter? Right. So yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, kind of. Myself, personally, I've watched some video to know how to pass, where I've watched other drivers to learn how to pass. You know, like in Jamestown, hey, if Grimes can't pass in this area of the track, I ain't going to be able to, as an example. But also, I've looked at other people's where they tend to make mistakes, too, so I know how to set them up for a pass. Particularly the faster cars you race, the more sometimes it seems like you have to outfox. Yeah, I mean, th that's the thing about traveling is you don't have that advantage of knowing the drivers right. as much. So, of course, on those series, you pretty much drive with your pants on fire anyway. But, <laughs> I mean, it's... The biggest thing is I just never follow. Never follow. I never... I, unless you absolutely have to. You know, right. there's situations. But I remember you telling me uh, a long time ago... Sometimes you just gotta make your own lane. Yeah, you can't you can't pass them following them. Yeah. So even if you lose a spot, you're trying. In retrospect, I mean, when I was younger in racing, I'd follow because I'd be happy with third. And to the today's Scott fans, I will give up third trying to win and be happy with a six, knowing I tried something. If, yeah. Particularly if it's a one laner. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of my mindset too. Um, I, although I've always been a budget racer, so if I'm in third, right. I'm going to try, yeah. but I'm not, not going to give up, up third. third. Right. <laughs> All right. I need the money to get home. Uh, quick break for uh, Weir's uh, machine. Uh, if you go to Weir's, uh, they're in the link, but uh, they're a supporter of the show. They make trick stuff for race cars. Do you use any weird stuff? Yeah. I know you're kind of big with uh, Kieser, Kaiser. Yeah. And, uh, but you do use uh, anything yeah, in particular? Yeah, I've, I've known Chad for a few years. I, You know, I use just random stuff as J-bars, uh, you know, different tidbits. It, pretty much everything he does is He's pretty always cool. coming out with new stuff. I see uh, if you check out their Facebook page, they got some really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so, for the folks listening... Well, is there anything that you'd like to tell people about yourself that they don't know? Like something they don't, you know, know about Jason Grimes? Boy, I don't really know. I Pretty much 20 years of racing. I mean, that's, you know, if I have spare time, I enjoy hunting. That's about it. Oh, yeah. But yep, yep. It's no spare time. So. And Vinny and I always get to enjoy a <laughs> cup of coffee at the track. Yeah. One of my coffee drinking buddies. Uh, Vinny is Jason's dad. Uh, who are the people and uh, partners that you'd like to thank that kind of help you with racing? Um, primarily, you know, Integra, Kaiser Manufacturing. They've been with me since 2009. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they make shocks and all sorts of yeah, suspension stuff. Yeah, I mean, they've stuff. got everything. Um, they've, they've been a help um, locally, you know. Pretty much West End Hyden for I get a lot of my supplies from them. And your dad's always usually there helping you? Yeah, mostly at the track. Yeah. I mean, he's a busy guy yeah, too. too. Um, yeah. Does help a lot in the shop yeah. when he can. Um, yeah. Does he drive the bus occasionally too? Or is yeah. that, are you, for those you don't know, Jason Grimes bought one of Ozzy Osbourne's <laughs> tour buses and that's his race hauler. Yeah, well, no, not quite, could, but anyway, but, I'm ad-libbing there, yeah. but, uh, you got a bus, yeah. and, um, he has on occasion, on usually, occasion, but you're usually the wheel man on the bus, too, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a bit much for him to handle, um, it's old, like him, but, you know, when I'm totally out of energy, that's when I let, let Benny drive, so, 
Rank, uh, rank in order of importance. Car, driver, motor, shocks. Well, I would just say driver. Driver? Um, and then, well, that's chassis. Right. Yeah, chassis and chassis tuning, and then sh would shocks fall in there? Or motor kind of first? car. I mean, you could throw it into yeah. one, but I, I would, you know, it's hard to say in today's world you need everything. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not so much on engine so much as big numbers. It just has to run smooth and have no hiccups. Right. You know, we all want more power, but I've gotten to the point where I don't even need to read a dyno sheet. It's not worth it. Just if it runs smooth and doesn't have any hiccups, I'd, mm -hmm. I'd mm -hmm. rather have that yeah. than have to worry about anything. So, you know, because then you can work on set up or right. tires, you know, so... That's where I'm at with it. Cool, cool. Um, so uh, plans for the rest of the season. You're doing the Wasota 100, and are, you're doing a Midwest mod. Yeah. You built yourself. Yeah. And you're doing a modified too. Yeah. And you have, but you haven't raced a Wasota mod in how long? I think I ran maybe one or two shows last year. Yeah. So, but you got a little bit of experience at Fergus. Yeah, my they've gotten faster, you know. I'd say as the cars. I mean, you've got Buzzy's always fast. Dan Ebert has been on a oh, rail. I yeah. would say he's the fastest in Wasota. Period. Um, that guy's pretty much. Dave Kane, of course, is always fast. Ward yeah. Emery's fast. Another one I really like is Matt Gilbertson. Yep. When he is on, he's, he's on. unstoppable. Yeah. Um, and so obviously, and there's many other people too. So. Brady Gertis has been at Fergus. That's yeah. that's Gertie's territory there, boy. He can run that middle like in high and low like nobody's business. Well, so. Fergus in general, I mean, it's a tough joint. You know, you got tennises, you got Skitland. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could yeah. name. Yeah, there's so it's, a lot, a lot of fast. Yeah, it boils fast down to who's gonna be on. That's the and way I say. A little luck and little. Uh, I'll take yeah. the luck over skill any day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, yeah. For the Wasota 100, we'll be broadcasting live on the C-Squad Live show. We're going to get different drivers and different, maybe some track promoters, maybe some, maybe like the most insane fan ever. One o'clock every day at the Wasota 100, starting Wednesday. We're going to do practice, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Hopefully the weather will be beautiful. Uh, last plug on the sponsor, RHR Swag makes these cool LED cockpit lights, so you can you don't have to strap in on the dark. And they will be at a RHR Swag trailer at the Wasota 100, so come check them out. You can also register to win four free Hoosier tires. It'll be given away at 1 p.m. Thanks again for uh, coming down and uh, uh, sharing a little bit of Jason Grimes with the rest of us and um, everybody out there uh, that's watching. I don't have anyone to turn off the camera, so smile and help someone because there's nothing that feels better than helping someone along the way. And until next time, uh, smile. We're going to shut her down. Uh, thanks again, Jason.